guys, I am here tonight at Epcot and we're gonna go check out the seas with Nemo and friends. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go on the ride and then I'm going to show you around Sea Base a little bit, give you a little bit of history, a little bit of facts, a little bit of hidden Easter eggs, and then we might go eat at Coral Reef. So come along, let's go have some fun. All right, if you're in the queue for Nemo, the standby queue, there is a little hidden Easter egg right here where it says daily departures provided by. It is the Nautical Exploration and Marine Observation. An acronym for that would be Nemo. Okay, so this part of the queue, well the whole queue for Nemo is meant to be, you are walking down underwater. So you start at the beach and then every different room you go into takes you deeper under the water. So as we go, here's, a, here's the pier, and now we're going to be taking a dip under the pier as we go deeper under the sea. All right, well this is a cool effect, and you can actually see like boats I think they're supposed to be. This is very hard to navigate if you're coming straight in from the bright sun without letting your eyes adjust, so keep that in mind, guys. So I lied. The boat is actually in the room before, right before you get on the clamshells. And if you look really carefully, you can see little lights emanating out, like the boat's moving and causing ripples in the water. Thank you. All right, so this ride is considered an omni-mover, so it's constantly moving when you get on, so just keep moving. Oh, science is great, there's so much to know. Climb aboard explorers, it's time to go. What if Nemo's swimming out the sea? Hi, I'm Dory. I am looking for my son. Oh, I can help. Oh, <laughs> it's Nemo. Swim away. So if you're like me and you get motion sickness, this might be a spot in the ride to close your eyes. And fun little fact about this is that the song in the Big Blue World didn't premiere until the um, Animal Kingdom musical show. And then this little guy is my favorite. Yesterday, 18,257 people came through here, and it's exactly 3.2 seconds between clams. <laughs> and that's the ride. So I did learn that they do have an accessible clam shell for the Seas with Nemo and Friend ride. Um, if you're in an ECV or a scooter, you will have to transfer into a wheelchair, but they can just roll you in onto that particular clamshell and you can ride the ride. So that's actually pretty awesome. All right, here's a quick look at the directory for the seas. When you get off the ride, it lets you right off into sea base. So on the upper level, there's sea turtles, sharks rays, dolphins, and lower level, turtle talk with crush, which is closed at the moment, manatees, and ocean life. One of the cool things they have here is Finding Dory's Friends, which is like a scavenger hunt. The whole point is to come on, look around the different areas of sea base and find the and find some of Dory's friends. So each area is labeled with the location and then there's stickers in the middle that you put in the spots. I don't think you get anything for completing the scavenger hunt other than these cool stickers, but let's go check it out. My personal favorite area of Sea Base is Module 1B, which is the Manatee Rehabilitation Center. So you can actually see this from the first floor and the second floor, but let's go check it out. Manatees are some of my favorite animals. Um, when I went to the Keys, which I will eventually post a video of, we actually got to see some manatees in the wild, which was pretty freaking awesome. Oh, 
each different area there's this knowledge exploring with Mr. Ray where it gives you all different kinds of different little facts about the animals and then a little Easter egg down here is the original logo for the seas and let's check out module 1c which is ocean life reef ecosystems oh there's the eel This little guy here is a lionfish. And here are the seahorse. If you can see, their tails are wrapped around the plant and they're just holding on, chilling out. So right now, Bruce's shark world is currently closed because of the pandemic, but it's a really cool photo op. When it comes back out, you can pose inside of Bruce's mouth. Turtle Talk with Crush is also closed. It's a cute little show where Crush interacts with the kids in the audience. It's really adorable, actually. So now that we have finished downstairs, let's go up to the second level. Right when you get off the escalator, you get to the manatee area again. Right now, it is closed because it's late. I believe it's about 8.30 right now. So, can't get in to see them tonight, but maybe another day. Next, after you get off of the escalator, you go down this long hallway where there's dolphins, sea turtles, sharks and rays, and reef fish. So let's go. So a few little facts about the seas. Um, the seas with Nemo and friend used to be called the Living Seas, and um, construction didn't actually finish until July 15th, 1986. Even though it supposedly started with the construction of Epcot, the tank itself has 5.7 million gallons of water. Um, Spaceship Earth could actually fit inside the aquarium with room to spare, which is a nice little tidbit of information. When the seas opened, it was the largest saltwater aquarium at the time. Um, but in 2005, the Georgia Aquarium stole that title. The main tank of the seas is 203 feet in diameter, 27 feet deep, and holds, as I said, 5.7 million gallons of water. The water is recirculated at 35,000 gallons a minute, so the entirety of the seas is cycled through every 160 minutes. I'll be honest, one of my bucket list Disney items is to see the sea turtle in the screen in the same window as the crush and squirt sea turtle seen in the seas with Nemo and friends. A cool fact I just learned is that the coral here is what they call Disney Imagineering coral, so none of it is actually real. So it actually has a really strict cleaning regimen, so it has to be cleaned about every two weeks. So by the time they get through the whole aquarium, it's time to start again. As is the case with most Disney rides, it drops you off in a gift shop. This one is all Nemo themed, so there's a lot of cute stuff here. I really like this t-shirt. I shall call him Squishy. They also have little floaties. I'm having a Dory moment. There are a whole bunch of plushies. Um, I believe they're all $20, but don't quote me on that. I only see the pricing on one of them. Over here is a salt and pepper set for $20. There's a mine, mine, mine mug for $23. A whole bunch of different t-shirts, which are like $35, $36. A cute puzzle. Keep our pier beautiful. There's an I'm having a Dory moment hat, like the t-shirt from before. And this hat is really cool because 
it has like a 3D effect to it and then the, the brim of the hat is like clear. So I managed to grab a walk-up reservation here at Coral Reef Restaurant tonight. Um, I haven't eaten here in quite a few years. Um, honestly, the last time I came here, I wasn't super impressed, but let's see if anything's gotten better. Um, the view in here is spectacular though. This used to be one of my favorite places to come to eat as a kid because just sitting in front of the big aquarium, the wall of windows is insane. And here is a quick look at the current menu. They do still have the creamy lobster bisque for $10. They do have choices other than seafood, but the menu is very limited here. So you're basically up to luck of the draw when you get seated, unfortunately. If you're not seated right up against the uh, glass, you kind of have an obstructed view. Even if you're not sat right up against the dividers between the levels, you still don't have a great view. So before I dig in for dinner, I wanted to give credit to two of the books that I used for my research for today's video. The first one is called The Thinking Fan's Guide to Walt Disney World, and it's the Epcot version by Aaron Wallace. And the other one is The Hidden Magic of Walt Disney World 3rd Edition. Um, I'm also using a book on Kindle called The Epcot Encyclopedia. I'm going to link all three of these in the description below. So they do bring you bread. And then here is the lobster bisque. Now this is $10. Um, and I'll let you know how it goes. This used to be probably one of my favorite dishes in Walt Disney World. We used to come to the seas just to get it. So let's dig in. And for my meal, I got the salmon, which comes with a corn risotto. And there's a whole bunch of greens on top. I removed all the greens that were on top. And it's actually a really decent sized portion of salmon. There's a good amount of risotto there. And I believe this is $29. I really, really wish I had come back here sooner. Um, it has been almost 11 years since the last time I ate here. I had a very, very, very bad experience the last time I ate here. And it kind of just tarnished the whole restaurant for me. However, Tonight was really good. I had really great service. The lobster bisque was very similar to the way I remember it from my childhood. And the salmon itself was cooked really well. I don't know if I would have liked it as much without the corn risotto, but I could have done without like the little forest of greens on top. But that's just me. I would recommend getting the salmon, even though the um, signature dish there is the mahi-mahi. Overall, I would definitely actually recommend coming back here. I might actually come back here at some point again. So um, if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much. I really appreciate you watching. Please give my video a big thumbs up. It really, really helps my channel. Subscribe if you're new here. I do this a lot. I'm in the parks like three or four times a week and I try to take you along with me as often as I can. And as usual, always remember to soar over the magic. See you guys. Yeah.